And we'll go to line number one right now. This is Andrew in New York. Welcome, Andrew. Hey, Eddie. Um, I want you to consider the other side of the equation about um, the electronic music or the uh, lip syncing or the helping of the backing tracks. I've been to too many shows where the sound is terrible or the singer just can't hit those notes anymore, and I am get really annoyed. Ticket prices are not cheap anymore. They are outrageous, and you specifically mentioned festivals, too, where the ticket prices are even more outrageous. And I don't blame the artist for possibly, I don't think it's just necessarily laziness of an artist that they don't want to have the audience or their fans have a bad sounding show. So I think maybe you're possibly a little harsh on if there's artists that can't have vocals go for 90 minutes or they just know that the product live is going to be a letdown from what it would be in the studio. So I just like to hear your thoughts on the other side of a show sounding terrible. um, Andrew, my feeling is this. If an artist is charging you money, no matter how much it is, to perform live, they are telling you you are coming to see a live performance, and they cannot deliver a suitable enough sound live like bands are supposed to, then they should not be performing anymore. If they can't find a way to create a decent enough live performance by actually playing and singing their instruments, then they should retire. Or they should supplement their band with live musicians enough to make it work. And I'll give you an example of that. Aerosmith. Aerosmith has a guy On stage, they introduce him. He's helping us out tonight on vocals and keyboards. Please say hello to Buck Johnson. Nothing wrong with that. When you are paying the money, the hard-earned money you just described, to hear a computer, what are you paying for? Where's the variable of a live concert? Where's the thrill of the fly without a net we're seeing a show live when you are listening to a recording? What's the point? Yeah, I guess I can respect your thought where you're saying then just shut it down and don't play live. Yeah. But, uh, because because here's the other want, I, here's the other thing, Andrew. Yeah, How do you think? Let me give you a hypothetical. No, this isn't a hypothetical, by the way. This happens every day at rock festivals. How do you think if a band goes out there, right, on a stage? and they just poured their heart out into a performance that they actually sang and played everything live because they put the rehearsal and the effort into doing that. And then the band that plays after them comes on and is running tracks for 60 to 70% of what people are hearing is a recording off a computer. And everyone walking out of that venue is saying, wow, that band, the band that was running all the tracks, man, did they sound amazing. And the band that just worked their ass off to actually do it live is sitting there saying, wow, really? No shit. They sound exactly like that every single night. How is that even remotely fair? Like the whole idea of going to see a band live is to hear them live, see what detours it takes, see what... Look, I don't need... I don't need to hear a band play live and have it be spot on. That's not what live is. It should be loose. It should be a little different. That's what the beauty of live is. That's the variable between a good night and a bad night. I saw a great show. I saw an okay show. But if you're just out there croaking and you're so bad that you can't even do it anymore, nobody says people should do this forever. Athletes know when to retire. Pack it in. You can't be charging people money, premium prices, to see a live show that you are bullshitting the audience and faking it. It's it's outrageous to me, and it's ridiculous that anyone would even accept it to me. Because when it happened in pop music a number of years ago for the first time on Saturday Night Live, and Ashley Simpson got busted for doing it on TV, people went crazy. 
Now, in the pop world, it's completely accepted. Are we going to allow that to happen in rock? Just continue to look the other way at people who are just stealing money because they're playing to a track? It's it's ridiculous. Okay. Um, I think concerts now have become more about entertainment um, and the prices of where they're at. Oh, and thank you for allowing me to engage in this conversation for so so long, though. But if you, I don't view concerts or festivals as a competition to see who is the best. I think that if it's entertainment, that I can sympathize a little bit with bands wanting to say, "Hey, we're here for entertainment. They're here to see us," and. I maybe just crowds and people yeah, look, want that now. Andrew, I get it. I'm going to run only because I got so many calls. But thank That's you, Andrew. Fun. Thank you for your call. Look, I I understand. I understand what Andrew's trying to say. So basically, what you're saying to me, if you're okay with going to see your favorite band and finding out that they're lip syncing or stuff is on tracks at the yin yang, and you're okay with that, then basically you're saying that you're paying your money basically to see the musicians on stage going through the motions. That you're fine because you just physically saw the person pretending to play the songs or sing the songs. And you're okay with that. If we as a society have got in rock, have gotten to the point where that's so accepted and okay, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. And I'm, the, and I'm not even kidding you with this. And I just talked to Andrew Stocktail, a wolf mother, about it in the hallway. I am going to start a band. Because guess what? I can't play a note, and I can't sing a note. But if fans are willing to pay money to watch somebody fake it, why not pay to see me? What's the difference? I'll get up there and put a nice outfit on and you know, pretend like I'm singing and playing guitar, and people are going to love it and say how great I sound every night. Shouldn't matter, right? What's the difference? But I do agree with Andrew on one on one uh, point of his argument, which he said just at the very end of that phone call. If people don't care because they just want entertainment, well, folks, that's what you're getting. That's why it's happening. Because nobody's asking these questions. Everybody's looking the other way. Everybody is pretending that this isn't happening. Promoters don't give a shit. No promoter is booking a band and saying, hey, are you actually playing live or not? Because if you're not playing live, I'm not going to hire you. They don't care. They don't care. Just like they don't care who is in or is not in the lineup of the bands. They care about buying the logo and being able to put it in their ad, and will it sell tickets? That's all they care about. So if they don't care, and most of the public don't know or care, where does it end? It ends with basically us having a shit ton of bands faking it and you paying your money to see a live show that isn't live. Frankly, I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to tolerate it. I'm not going to go to it. And again, just for clarity, I'm not talking about a band that runs a keyboard track because they have one keyboard in one song. That's fine. I can even almost accept a tiny little bit of backing vocal, even though I think that's weak, but still. But come on, man. You know what I'm talking about. You know you know how many do you know how much of an issue this is now behind the scenes? For the bands that are playing to tracks, know that every other band that knows about it and they all do are talking about it. Because they're all talking to me about it. It is a widespread issue. You want to know how big of an issue it is? Because the bands that are actually playing live rightfully want the credit for it. Want an example? A few days ago, last week, Sebastian Bach put out a press release announcing his tour playing the first Skid Row album in its entirety. He was on my show on volume last Thursday. Grab it on demand on the app and listen to it. Sebastian, in the press release to announce his tour, put in the press release, and I want everyone to know when they come and see me, 
Everything that I am doing, all vocals, all instruments, everything is 100% live. We do not use tapes or tracks or machines live. Number one, that is an amazingly cool thing for Sebastian Bach to put it in there. In his press release for the tour. And why did he do it? Because he wants it to be known he's actually going to play live because half of the other bands on the road are not. Can you imagine, folks, process this. We are in a day and age now where an artist felt the need in a press release for a tour, for a live tour, to confirm that they were playing live. You don't think this is an epidemic? You don't think this is a problem? You don't think other artists, the artists that actually play live, are not pissed about this? Why else would Sebastian feel the need in his press release announcing his tour to put in there, by the way, I actually play all live? Think about that. It was literally in the press release. So we are at a point now where you're buying tickets to go see a live band and you need reconfirmation that what you're going to see and hear that night is actually live. That's not crazy. That doesn't mean things have gone off the rails. (laughs) I think so. I don't think I'm, I'm not out of line on any of this. The artists themselves who are doing it live are telling you. It's, it's just incomprehensible. And when, when I hear people say to me, oh, well, you know, they can't do it. Well, then stop. Then w- w- why would you charge someone hundreds of dollars for a ticket that you can't even deliver? There's no, there's no uh, mandate that every band has to last forever. Can an athlete play Pro sports forever? No. They reach a point they can't do it anymore. They respectfully retire and they do something else with the rest of their life. I'm telling you, it's ridiculous.